Hi, I'm Kimmy with On William Street, and we are here to help you become a more confident quilter from the piecing to the quilting and everything in between. This week, we're gonna talk about some fun curved walking foot quilting ideas. So if you checked out our other videos, we do have one video that's all on like very beginner walking foot quilting motifs. Um, they're based on a grid system, super easy to put in. We also have another one that has a little bit more of some advanced, um, not really advanced, but as you get going and get more comfortable, we have some other fun designs you can do, but they all use straight lines. So we thought it would be fun this week to show you a couple different options you can do that actually have curved lines. And these are, we're gonna do a little bit of marking on these, um, on one of them. But the other one, we're actually gonna go ahead and freehand. I'm gonna show you how to kind of move that around the quilt and move it around the shape to get those nice smooth curves without having to take a whole lot of time to mark the quilt ahead of time. So um, the supplies that you're gonna need is obviously we're gonna need a walking foot. We're gonna do all these with our walking foot just on our regular domestic machine. So the nice thing about a walking foot is that it does move all your top and your bottom layers together. So it's gonna help a little bit. It's not going to push the fabric and it's gonna give you a little bit of a nicer finish in the finished top. Um, also, like I said, it's going to be on your domestic, so you don't need any fancy machines for this. You don't need any great big systems. You can definitely do these and finish out your quilts using some of these motifs. We're also going to need a marking pen for one of them. We just have a heat erase pen, and this one, it can be any kind of a marking pen that you like. Um, they have like hair bone markers if you don't want to put an actual line on your quilt. You've got heat erase pens, you've got chalk lines. Find something that works for you. Just definitely make sure that you test it first if it does, um, if it is a, a pen or chalk or something to make sure that it's gonna come out. We're also gonna need some ways to make some different circles. And there's a lot of things you can do with this, just depending on the size of your quilt. The one, we're gonna do one of them that, without any marking, but on the one we're gonna mark, we're just gonna need a couple different circles. And I've got a spool of thread here, I've got a cup, lids, whatever works to fit the space that you're going. And I'll kind of show you how to decide um, what size you want that to be here in just a moment. So a couple of real basic supplies, so go ahead and grab those and we will show you how to go ahead and mark the design first and then how to stitch it out. And we're also going to stitch it with very little um, moving around. So it's gonna be a real continuous line design. So you don't have to worry about stopping and starting a whole bunch as well. So the first design that I'm gonna show you, this is gonna be a fun design that you can put in squares. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in all of these different squares and I'm gonna use the same motif. And we are going to want to mark this out first, um, or at least I am because I'm gonna do a little bit of a bigger arch with this. So I'm gonna take my cup and what I decided is I just put it on so that it meets corner to corner and then see about how far out it goes. I don't want it to go past this halfway point. I want it to fall somewhere in the middle of the block here and it doesn't have to be an exact um, fit. But like I said, just somewhere in that center area of the, the block. We don't want it to go across the halfway point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line around it and then just match it up on the other. And you're gonna see that it overlaps that previous um, arch. Uh, that's totally okay. That is what we want it to do. And I'm going to do all four sides. And then I'm gonna show you how you can actually stitch this out real nice and easy without stopping too much. So I'm gonna mark that same thing in all of these squares here on the end where I don't have the full thing. I'm gonna mark here, but then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna mark this as if it was a whole square. And so I'm only going to go ahead and stitch out half of it there. I'm also gonna do it in here, but this one, it was too big of a circle, so it's not giving me as much of an arch as I wanted. So I'm gonna pull in a little bit of a smaller circle and just play around with the circle shapes that you've got. Um, no need to get anything fancy for this. We all have an assortment of circle objects in our houses. So with this, on um, the little triangles, because I'm putting the arches in the squares, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my walking foot to just stitch in the ditch around those. I'm not gonna worry about putting anything inside of those shapes. So you can see we now kind of have the same shape and it's gonna rotate. So all of these, I'm gonna go ahead and mark all of these out the same way. Okay, so now that it's all marked, you can also start to see some of these other fun shapes that are coming out. You can see kind of almost these flower type shapes that go around the center sections and it starts to really create some fun motifs with these arches. One thing to keep in mind is the farther in your arch goes, the more um, 
overlap you're going to have here. So these ones, they don't go out as far, so they only have a little bit of an overlap. So if, depending on the look that you want, if you want a lot of overlap, make sure that it's coming almost to the middle. But if you don't, don't want as much overlap, then make it be a, a little bit of a smaller arch there, and that's going to help you adjust those looks. So now we will go ahead and start stitching out this design. So there are a couple different stitch paths I'm going to show you kind of based on what your final quilt looks like, what the blocks look like. So I'm going to assume that um, they're not always going to look exactly like this one. So first off, with this shape, where it's a little more separated from the rest, it doesn't really connect to any corners, we're going to stitch this one and we're going to stitch this motif all in one continuous line. So first thing I'm going to do is anytime uh, I'm going to go ahead and go down, I am going to pull my back thread up. And hold on to it so that I can bury that later and not have to worry about um, those threads getting tangled on the back. So I'm going to put it down so that my foot it starts right in the corner. Then you're just going to go ahead and follow your line up around. A couple of things, if you're having trouble with the walking foot, um, if your stitches are too small, if your fabric isn't moving smooth, um, slow down. That is one thing to keep in mind. The walking foot was not meant to go very quickly due to the nature of what it is. So just take your time, put on a good book, put in a good movie, and enjoy the process. So after you get to that edge, just make sure your needle's down. I'm just gonna pivot around, and I'm going to do the next arch. Again, just taking it slow, nice curves. If you have to kind of pick up and move your fabric, um, your foot and move your fabric as needed for some of the smaller arches, go for it and then work your way into this next corner. And you're stopping just right inside that corner as close as you can possibly get. Then we're going to flip our quilt around and do the next arch. One more. And that one is done. So with this, um, you don't necessarily have to stop here. If I was doing this on my actual quilt, I would then go on a big quilt. I would then just go to, and I would use the ditches. And I'm just gonna stitch right along that ditch to get to the next space that I need to be in. And I would actually go back and go around all of these little triangles stitched in the ditch as well anyway. So that's not gonna be a problem for me to go ahead and move around those. Okay, so for the next motif where they connect at the corners, I'm actually going to stitch it in lines along it. And so it's going to be a lot more, e it's gonna move along the quilt a lot easier. There's gonna be less turning. So that's going to be especially nice on the domestic machine um, where you don't wanna be switch flipping your machine around, your quilt around a whole bunch. So we're just going to start here on this arch and come in right to the corner. And then you can see I'm already now primed to go ahead and rotate my quilt just a little bit and do the next one. And then, of course, just keep going. This is nice because it gets you starting and stopping on the ends. So you don't have to worry about burying those threads. One more half. And now that it's off, I would just go down to the next one. And if you noticed there, I did start in the middle and I'm gonna do this middle one and work my way up to the edge. And it's kind of nice to work um, quilts from the middle out. It's going to make sure that any extra fabric is going to get pushed to the outside and not stuck in the inside somewhere. 
It also means that I'm only ever going to have half the quilt underneath the machine. So after I turn this, if this was a nice big quilt, um, I only have to worry about this half and I would finish all of these out and then I could turn the quilt around and finish out this half of the quilt. So you don't ever have the whole bulk of the quilt underneath the machine at any time. And that's just going to make it easier to maneuver on a domestic sewing machine. Especially if you have a smaller throat. Then when you're done with them all in the one direction, you're just gonna go ahead and go down around the corner. And then you're just gonna repeat that same process across the other direction. So this motif is done. You can see even though we did it in rows on these outside ones, it still creates the circular motif around the blocks. And if you wanted to, you could still go through and definitely add you know, some stitching in the ditch along these seams to hold those blocks a little bit flatter. So now we're gonna do the next one. And we're actually gonna work it very similar to the same way we did the one where we go row to row on that one. But it's gonna be a little bit different and it's gonna give us more of an orange peel look. So with this one, we're going to do similar to that one where we did it with the rows, but we're going to do a soft arch. We're going to start on one of these points, and we're going to do a soft arch into this point, and we're going to go back and forth all the way to this side, but then we're going to mimic it on the other side as well. So it's going to create like a little orange pill look. Then we're going to come down, and we're going to do this row, come down and do this row, and then we're going to come down around the corner, and we're going to do the same thing going in this direction. So just back and forth, alternate around those lines. After we get all of these rows done, we're actually going to then come in and we're going to do the diagonals as well. So we're going to start out here on the outside corner. We're going to come in here. Then we're going to 
come out here and then back across this way. And then we're just gonna go ahead and just stitch in the ditch a little bit and that's gonna get us to, oh, we could go around and do all the outside points and then when we're done, come in and stitch in the ditch a little bit and that's gonna get us to this inside section where we can then come in here, here, work your way all the way around and then just stitch right back out. So we're gonna be able to go ahead and do this whole thing without ever stopping and breaking thread once. So with this one, we're just gonna go ahead and start quilting. We don't need to worry about marking anything, so we can just go at it. If your arches aren't totally perfect, that's fine. Once you get the quilt done, once you get it washed, you're never gonna see it anyway. So don't stress over that. You'll get better um, as you go along and as you practice more. So we're just gonna do a soft arch, probably going out about a half of an inch is all from your seam line and then just arch it right back in. So it's not going to be as big of a curve as we did on the previous ones. Then you can see we have a nice little soft arch there. Then we're just going to do the same thing going on the opposite side. And the reason that we switch back and forth and go opposite side is it just seems to be a little bit easier to get a smooth arch than to stop and turn the f and have to then pivot the fabric and stop and pivot the fabric. You can just go right through that seam and keep going. And then one more all the way to the end of the block. And any time you can do a lot of lines and seams without having to rotate your quilt a whole bunch is going to be nice and beneficial and make it easier to quilt. So now that we're done with that line, I am going to turn it around and we are going to go back. And we're just going to do the exact same thing but on the opposite side of the line. Now that that one's done, we're gonna go to the next line. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. If you don't want to have the arches on the outside of the block, just go ahead and do a nice straight line right along the edge of the block. Or if you wanna have those arches there as well, we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna arch that around, coming in about a half of an inch. Make sure that the um, quilt is basted really nicely. So when you do this, you don't pull and distort your block too much. And then same thing. And I am stopping about a quarter of an inch inside because that's gonna be my seam line or where my um, binding is gonna go. And I don't want to lose my quilting, so we are stopping in a little bit from where that is. Oh. And I just realized I missed going down, so I'm going to go back now. See, it's okay if you don't do things exactly like planned, you just figure it out as you go. So that we can make sure to get that center line. So now that I'm back here, I'm going to go ahead and do this center line and then finish that one and then do these three really quick. So one thing I want to just mention really quick is um, where I am right now I do have a couple more rows to go, but where I stopped here on this corner, if you didn't want to go all the, if you didn't want to have to come back and do this section later, stitch it to the ditch, you can actually rotate it and you can do those center ones right now. Sometimes as you get going, you kind of realize that there's a better path that you can go along. So I'm going to just do these the same way that I did the other ones. I'm going to go all the way from here to the end. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to curve the back. And then when I get over to this corner, I'll do the same thing. And that will get those inside seams without having to worry about stitching in the ditch later. So we're going to follow that path. And I will go ahead and mark this out inside um, and a photo in the blog post as well. So you don't have to try to remember it. I will draw it out for you. So 
So now we are back to where we were and we can just carry on and finish out that last seam. Now we're back to where we started and we'll keep going. All right, so we have one last stitch path to do and that's gonna be this outside shape. So now that I'm here, I'm just gonna go down, I'm gonna go ahead and do all of the light blue, and then I'm gonna come back and do the dark blue. Then I'll go around to this corner, come and do the, both the light blue, do the dark blue, work my way around the outside, light blue, dark blue, outside, and then work my way back over to where I can finish out, um, finish out over here where I've started, and then it will be all done. And this is all done. So whenever I'm doing um, a design like this, I always try to find like the easiest way to get through the block without having to stop and start. There's usually always a continuous path you can take. So I definitely recommend sitting down when you have blocks like this and playing around with it with your fingers, sketching out some, some different lines and designs. And you can use your walking foot to complete simple designs like this very easily. And when you find that continuous line, um, it means that you're not going to have to worry about stopping and starting and breaking threads and burying them. So it just makes it a real nice, quick and easy way to finish a quilt out. So when you're thinking walking foot quilting, it doesn't always have to be straight lines. You can easily go ahead and mix it up and throw little gentle curves in there and still easily accomplish those with your walking foot. And it just gives a whole new look to the quilts and gives you a whole lot of other options you can use when finishing your quilt tops. If you have any questions definitely let us know um, if you go to the blog post we will have diagrams and things as well so if you want to kind of have a better layout of exactly how to stitch these paths we will show you some different step-by-step -step, um, photos in the blog post so don't forget to check that out and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel hit the bell so that you're notified whenever we post a new video and we will see you next week